welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, we just returned from filming Long Ride Home. We have filmed so many seasons. We had a ride from Cocoa Beach, Florida, up to Jacksonville, and then all the way through the Big Bend country of Texas to, to uh, San Diego, which was replicating my ride I did on my bicycle, only in reverse. We also filmed a, a series where we went from Cocoa Beach down to Key West, then all the way up to New Jersey, down the Blue Ridge Parkway, and to uh, down the uh, the tail of the dragon, and uh, w we filmed in Hawaii, in my home here in Hawaii. But we most recently just uh, took long ride home by the Amtrak train up to Virginia, up towards uh, Lorton, Virginia. Got off the Amtrak train with our motorcycle, and uh, rode into D.C. Met with some of the nights on bikes there, and then rode into Cleveland uh, on the way. Stopped at Steubenville, saw the met the new president there, and. Uh, met with Matthew Leonard and uh, Dr. Mark Miravalla, and then off to Cleveland to meet up with uh, the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Club, and then up to uh, Lansing, to Notre Dame uh, to meet with Tom Greif, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, then up to uh, Lansing, Michigan to meet with the Knights on Bikes, up over the Upper Peninsula and over to Minnesota. So we're excited. We have a lot of, a lot of episodes in the can. We, re we, recognize, we, rec we, we think we have about 50 episodes in the can. Only two have been aired so far. But actually, season uh, two is probably, by the time you're listening to this, has already been aired, aired on EWT. And we want to remind you that Long Ride Home uh, is available on iTunes. Uh, you can uh, go to our website and find out all the different places, places you can see it. Google Play, iTunes, YouTube TV, and uh, Prime Video, as well as on EWT and the Armed Forces Network. And we just appreciate everybody's help. You know, when you go on a long ride like this, uh, I think the number one... You do all the planning that you can ahead of time as far as time and distance uh, and, and, and all of the supplies and equipment and the people you need to, to, to shoot, the people that are going to be with you on the ride. Uh, and so that would be called prudence. And then when you start the ride, you have this tremendous uh, need for fortitude. When you're filming, it's not just making the ride. It's making the ride but stopping and filming and being alert and being aware of what the Holy Spirit is doing along the way. And I think so So many times in our lives, uh, we get in a situation where we kind of get in a, in a rut. We have our head down, and we're just pulling the plow, we're, and we're, we're using the virtue of fortitude instead of also adding to that the virtue of hope. Fortitude is like a fullback lowering his head and running over, uh, over the line to score a touchdown. Hope is more like a wide receiver sprinting into the open with his hands outstretched and looking up. We can't just get locked into the task at hand. Uh, uh, you know, when you're a young family or, or maybe you're a single father or a single mother, you can get so locked into the grind of, I just, I got to make money. I got to help the kids with their homework. I got to get them to soccer practice. Um, I got to do this. I got to do that. And you forget the reason why. And so uh, in, 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 there are time to time on, on the long ride home when we're shooting, when it just seems like the, the Holy Spirit will tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, you got a minute? And just to spend time alone with the Lord and spend time in meditation, spend time uh, every morning. Uh, Jerry and I, Jerry Cohn, who's with us on all the rides, my good friend from Baylor. Um, and w at early in the morning before everyone is up, be before the first coffee cup is even made uh, in the lobbies, we're there and having our prayer time and then getting ready for the day. So don't forget, in, the, in, the, in your day, in your grind, on your way home to heaven, don't just lower your head and work, but look up. And, and look for the reason, look for the why, and, try, and, and, and spend some time with the Lord and enjoy his presence. So guess what? We have one of, our, one of our guests on Long Ride Home with us today. We were with Tom Gripe, the president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, in Notre Dame just a couple months ago. Tom, welcome back to the show. Well, thanks for having me. Great to see you again. I, you know, I'm so grateful for uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for so many reasons. One of them is that you're our faithful sponsor of this radio show. Uh, you're our only sponsor uh, that, um, I guess, donates uh, kind of in a corporate way to us, to the radio show. And so it keeps our radio show coming to our listeners 
and so we really really value that but also i'm a i'm a member of the credit union and you guys have come through for me big time uh with the car loan you guys did a car loan for me while we were in the middle of a shoot in hawaii where mm -hmm. i was on the set constantly it was done by text message and electronic <laughs> electronic signatures and then when i needed to, uh, a refi a mortgage you guys were there for me too and uh that wonderful uh person you have bettina uh, mm -hmm. always seems to be the one that helps me so so cool to come to notre dame and go to the credit union and meet you. Well, we've met before, but to meet the people there that have helped me. So it's great. It was like uh, a great welcoming when we showed up. Well, we, we're glad to be able to help you and help anybody who uh, who is uh, in need or, or wants to be part of a, of a mission because we take the profits that we make and we support – uh, events and activities very much like, you know, your shows and, and other things. But we like to put the money back in where our our members like to um, see their money go. You know, it's interesting. I used to work for a, a Fortune 500 company that was then acquired by a Fortune 100 company. The name of the company I won't, doesn't, isn't important, but it isn't a for pro it is a, it is a co-op. So it's a, it's a huge corporation, Fortune 100 corporation, that supplies farmers with everything they need in terms of fertilizer and, and, and supplies, and then brings their, their product to the market, whether it's dairy or soy or, or beef or whatever. You know, uh, they, they, so, but the concept behind that corporation was so focused on its members as opposed to let's make a profit. Profit is important. It fuels, it fuels the mission. But that's what's unique about credit unions. Uh, I'm not sure all credit unions really remember that their mission is primarily to their membership but i certainly certainly experienced that when i work with you guys well thank you thank you it it is hard you have to constantly remind yourself why we are in business and uh, that's hard because you can have drift just like in the course of our everyday lives we know why we're here on earth but we get caught up in the day-to-day -day of our secular lives and you can kind of drift and that's the same thing at the credit union and a bank and really any any job that we have but there's a big difference between a bank and a credit union oh there sure is there should be anyway um, banks are not you know banks are good operations they're not the devil all right they do good work but they're fundamentally structured to optimize profits okay for shareholders OK, and then in the course of that, they hire people and they give money to the community and all that. But at its structural level, credit unions are different. And it's not we bad. Not it's not bad for them to make a profit because it's it's usually retirees that own most of their most of those absolutely. banks, you know, through their stocks. But but it's yeah, a different it's a different focus. And I, I say that at the beginning of of what I'm saying here, because I don't want people to view it as good versus bad because it's not. It's just different. We as a credit union are designed to sustain ourselves over time, which means, as you said, make enough profit to pay our people, keep current on technology and everything else. But once we've accomplished that, our 100 percent focus is to give good deals to the borrowers and our savers and give them education and give them things on the margin that they otherwise wouldn't get, help the disenfranchised, that type of thing. And it's not done with our excess. It's done with the basic flow of capital and cash flow through our business. Yeah, it's just such a different business model. I know working for the, the big co-op was like that, too, was always t talking about the members. And I want, I'm a CPA. I'm looking at return on investment and all that. And it's important. But um, it, it's, a, it's a model that I think uh, we can uh, – uh, some of the things that you apply there, we can apply in our daily lives, too. It was kind of fun when we showed up. Remember, I, I pulled in – we were going to, I, I pulled into, into Notre Dame. We had driven, ridden up from Cleveland, but my motorcycle continued to have challenges, Tom, all along the way. I think I know what it is. It's, it's, it's a, it's something that helps recharge the battery. So I had a brand new lithium battery and, and all of a sudden it was dead in Cleveland and I had to, I had a flat tire in DC. My motorcycle kept dying on me, uh, for, for no reason. And I would jump it and would work and then it wouldn't start in the morning. So I had to trailer my motorcycle from Cleveland to uh, Notre Dame, which in a way was kind of nice. I had a good excuse just to sit in the, in the, in the Tahoe. And, but it was really great to see you because you, you, we got together in the morning and then we went for a ride around the campus in your car and we got to film us having a dialogue there. 
you know, the campus of Notre Dame is truly a beautiful place, you know, from the grotto to the uh, Basilica, Sacred Heart Basilica, of course, the football and, and all that. But it's just a lovely, lovely campus, a lot of green, a lot of trees, just a very peaceful, peaceful place. And it's and there's a lot of open spaces there, too. I mean, compared to a lot of campuses that are all are all crunched in. But we had a really cool dialogue there when we were uh, talking about um, what it is to be a man. We were talking about what success really is. And so when we come back after this, I want to pick your brain a little bit and talk about uh, those virtues and what that really means. This is the this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're talking with Tom Gripe. He's the CEO of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union and, and someone who I call a friend. Uh, and I want to invite everybody, go to our website, uh, deepadventure.com, and you can check out our bookstore. I have both of my books are available there, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, as well as uh, Deep Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. Our DVDs of the TV show are there. We got the Man Cave Cigars. We have so many things at our store. So go there and, uh, and uh, place your order, and that helps us uh, support the ministry. Uh, while you're there, you can also sign up for our newsletter. It comes out every week. Uh, if, you're a newsletter, if you're a newsletter subscriber, you actually get our email uh, before it even, our email inclu- includes a video version of the radio show that it, uh, you get even before the radio show airs. And of course, our radio show is available also on all of the podcast a- uh, platforms, plus it's available on YouTube and in video format, so it's pretty cool. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're here with Tom Gripe. He's the president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, one of our, our, our basically our, our, our sponsor of our radio show. So thanks to them that the show is coming to you every week. But I, uh, when I was uh, filming Long Ride Home, I met up with Tom in Notre Dame. Uh, this is our third time to get together was, was at that, that time. And we got in his car and we filmed an interview, which we've always wanted to do. We d- did an interview on the run as he was giving us a tour of Notre Dame. But while we were doing that, Tom, uh, we talked about uh, success and and the different attributes of what it means uh, of virtue. Now, can you help me? Uh, give me a give me what your definition of success would be. I think success is the it's a journey. It's a process. Um, I read somewhere once, and I really believe this. Um, success is a journey. It's not to get to the end, but it's how you do it, how you do what you do climbing up the hill. And that means when you fail, you get back up. Um, as you become successful, you be, stay humble and centered. You help people around you. Um, you're kind to everyone. And the idea is, I think, when you finally pass and you move on to your reward, people say that you left a positive mark and the world's a little bit better by the efforts that you made. It's a kind of a modest, uh, a modest goal, but I think if we all did it, the world would be a lot better place. So I like what you're saying. You know, my dad, uh, my dad, Deacon, Deacon Greg Wozniak, uh, he was a professional speaker. And he used to say that success is a progressive realization of personal predetermined worthwhile goals. And I remember um, that was uh, from Success Motivation Institute. Paul J. Meyer uh, founded that, that, uh, that company. And that's what you're saying. It's a journey. It's almost like, so if I have a goal, and I accomplished that goal, and I'm sitting on the top of that mountain I wanted to climb. Uh, a lot of things had to happen. One of the things is uh, I myself had to grow to become that goal, make, meaning it was worthwhile. And others needed to be blessed in the process of it, or it was worthless. 
Uh, but also, the minute you accomplish that goal and you just sit there, you're kind of a failure. You know, because you're not, you're not, you're you're no longer on the journey. Right, got to keep going. Because I like what you said. At the end of your life, when you pass, you want to be able to look back. So it's not like, how many people do we know at the age of sixty-five just kind of quit? They re- they retire and they basically stop when they could have the greatest uh, the greatest accomplishments then. Exactly right. It, like you say, it's a, it's a journey, and you can't get hung up in the um, the secular benefits. You know, if you become a president or become wealthy or whatever you become, those can easily distract us. And we need to say, okay, that's fine. Uh, give back as much as you can and, and, and keep going. Because when you're gone, you're gone. And you want to create a legacy. You want to create motion that other people can uh, continue if it's worthwhile. I see. And, you know, it's like um, it, it's the other thing is that we want to be able to bring others with us to heaven. Yeah, you know, if we, if, we, if we go to heaven and we see that there are others there because – of uh, our witness to them, either by the way we lived our life or by the words that we that we shared with them. You know, life's a circle. You know, by living a good life, we want to bring good people along or bring people along to heaven. But don't forget the other side of it. There are good people out there that are dragging me along, giving me good advice and, and challenging me and giving me guidance and being good mentors. So it's, it's a circle. It really is. We're all here to help each other. So success is... Success is, um, is, is, is accomplishment. You know, I remember I used to think uh, self-esteem might come from your mommy and your daddy, but mm. confidence comes from doing. Oh. Self-confidence comes by setting a goal and, and reaching it. How, well, do, how, think, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say confidence to me is knowing that you can get knocked down on your rump and, and you can get up and keep going again. If you know that, Failure does not become paralyzing. And I, early in my career, I started to use the word failure a lot in my own life, in my own journey, just saying the word. And I found it to be very liberating because when I talk to people who are in the business world, when they, they don't want to acknowledge failure, they want to pretend like they're perfect and they, they're on this perfect path and they have their life planned out. And by talking about failure, it's just part of the journey I've personally found it very, very liberating. And I talk to anybody who'll listen, I'll tell them, embrace that word. Because if you can, if you can master it, nothing can stop you. I love that. I really love that, too. Uh, you have to embrace failure. You know, surfers fall more than little babies do. You know, because we're, we're, you, if you're not failing at something, you're not stretching your limits. And I know as a CPA, when someone comes in to me and says, I'm going to start a new business and this is my great idea, I always ask him, how many business, businesses have you failed at before? Because they really are naive until they've oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, failed a couple of times. Um, you know, yeah. I was going to say, I, I taught a couple classes at Notre Dame um, over the last couple of years as an adjunct faculty. And these are classes of you know, maybe 100 sophomores in the corporate finance world. And they're learning finance. And these are kids that in order to have gotten there, were very, very successful, very high scores, valedictorians, all that type of thing. And I said to him, how many times do you think you're going to be fired over the course of your career? And Bear, you should have seen the look on their faces. They were aghast. Of course they're not going to fail. They're perfect. You know, and I had to tell him, I said, look, I, I got fired twice. And that was, those were the most devastating and the best things that ever happened to me. And you're trying to tell these kids life is not what you think it is. If until you get knocked on your rump, you haven't started living yet. And it's not just it's not just in your career, but men are so especially are so concerned about admitting failure in their personal lives. It's not like you want to broadcast it to the world, but you need to have a company of men that uh, you really believe in, that you can say, look, I'm really having a problem in this area or a challenge in this area. I've really failed financially. I mean, I, I bought a house, you know, uh, too big, or I built that pool when I didn't have the finances. It was all right. for the right reasons, uh, but I'm, now I'm really stretched, really thin, and what can I do? Uh, you kind of learn, you kind of, most, you know, as a CPA, it's kind of funny, it's people come and go to confession to me. You know, financial right. confession. I don't give them absolution, but they give they give a <laughs> confession. And as a, as a your position too, people have to basically say, yeah, here is the real truth. You know, 
someone's driving a really big car, but they have fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt or something like that. So, so there is that there is that element of needing to accept failure, being willing to seek the counsel of others when that happens, but knowing that uh, failing is part of the process of success. Uh, you know, and I, and I, I, I kind of have this thing where when I have a new thing I'm going to do, I tend to speak about it. I broadcast it. Where most people would say, oh, you should keep that to yourself. What if you don't succeed? But I would say, okay, I'm going to start a radio show or I'm going to write a book. And I fail a lot. <laughs> you know? but, um, but it's something about speaking it start, that starts it in motion. And then, and then you, you progress. You know, there's a scripture verse uh, in uh, the first chapter of Joshua, in the first book of the first psalm, that says, if you meditate on God's word, success will attend all that you do. And I was reading in the catechism today about how we pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, on earth, not just in me, not just in us, not just in the church, but on the whole earth, that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But the catechism was saying that we need to spend time with God to really know his will and to pursue his will for our life. No, that's true. That's true. And we're his hands and feet. If we don't do it, it's not going to get done. No, that's true. What, what do you, you were talking earlier about how uh, you are mentioning others that, that are kind of pulling you along. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your thoughts about leadership. All of us are leaders, whether we're good or bad, oh, yeah. we're leading somewhere. Some people, people we don't even know are watching us. Tell me, t- let's start a discussion on that. What is sure. leadership? You know, leadership is not the position you hold, but it's how you uh, it's what you do with other people. Meaning a leader leads from the front. A, a leader is somebody who, by example, that's very important. They show people the way they give them confidence. They let them feel empowered that they don't have to be perfect. They just have to keep going. In the credit union, we do that all the time. We've had several failures along the way. And saying to the organization, that's okay. Th- these are steps along the way to success. And by believing that organizationally, and then at the personal level, um, I, again, I keep bring, coming back to this term, Bear, liberation. When you become personally liberated from your fears, you really, at least in my case, I really feel that I can implement what I believe the Lord wants me to do. Not being afraid of failure, not being afraid of criticism, not being afraid of doing something wrong. And the people who gave me that um, vision and that path are were my, were my father, were people that I knew coming up in the business world who were very successful, but very humble men and women who just showed me that it isn't about the things, it's about the actions and influencing lives and um, making, helping people one life at a time and just telling them it's okay. We're talking there's, with nothing, Tom, there's nothing magical to it we're at talking all. With, we're talking with Tom Gripe. He's the President of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, are one of our sponsors for our radio show. They're our only corporate sponsor, and then along with you individuals that uh, give to us monthly, we really appreciate you so much. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to invite you to go to uh, our website, deepadventure.com, and you can click on the Patreon button. It'll take you to that site, and you can become a monthly Patreon donor. Uh, we have different levels that you can start at. Uh, at. At one of the levels, though, I think it's the $20 a month level, you get all of our radio shows released the minute that we uh, record them, which is often months before they're aired on EWTN. Plus, what's really cool is with Long Ride Home, we'll often have, you know, we'll, we'll get our episodes done one at a time. 
then they go to the network for review, and then we edit them again. It could take us, from the time we finish episode one of the next season, it may be a year before it actually airs. But you get to see the director's cut of every episode as it's prepared. So that means about every five or six weeks you'll get a new episode. Plus you have access to all of the, the episodes of Long Ride Home. So our TV show, Long Ride Home, uh, we need your help. EWTN provides just a portion of what it takes to uh, do our TV show. They don't provide anything as far as uh, the production of our radio show to us. So we need your help. So if you go to Patreon, you can become a $5 a month donor, a $10 a month donor. Um, there's different gifts that you get at certain levels. But if you, come, if you go in at $20 a month, <clears throat> then you get access to all the radio shows early, and you get early access to the TV show too. So uh, please go there and support uh, Deep Adventure Ministries. We really... Uh, we really value what every every donor we uh, we value so much. We're here with Tom Gripe. He's the president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Uh, Tom uh, and and uh, uh, these this credit union is a supporter of our ministry, and I've used them uh, on two different occasions. And the personal service and the technical uh, uh, back office, you know, the way you can access your information or the way they do things. Is, is different than anything I've is, is better than any experience I've ever had in the financial world. And that's come from, coming from a guy that used to be a corporate banker. <laughs> so yeah. I really appreciate Tom Gripe and what you do for us. Tom, talk to me about what you would say to a young family that's starting out. Uh, maybe uh, he's working and she's working. Uh, they have a couple babies, maybe one baby and one on the way. Mm-hmm. What kind of steps can they, what kind of, uh, challenges do they face that are unique to them at the most their most at their most vulnerable time of their life uh the challenges financially tend to be the great uh the great issue that breaks up marriages what kind of counsel would you give to that young couple well you 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 hit it in an early in an early part of a marriage when you're building a family and all there's never enough money to go around and in today's world oftentimes both people are both mom and dad are working or uh, one is working two jobs and there's just a lot of stress. So the first thing I would say to them is stay focused on your family. Don't get distracted by the car your neighbor just had or moving into a house that you're not, another house that you're not ready for. It's those distractions that keep people from keeping their eye on the ball. That's the first thing. The second thing is, and it kind of follows the first, is recognize that you have to pay yourself first. And I know that's a cliche, but by putting money in the bank, you are perf- uh, you are supporting yourself in the future. And by doing that with the power of compounding with interest in the bank and all that, you really can start getting ahead of, of the ahead of the game. So it's discipline, it's focus, it's not to get distracted. Um, and just to have, and a non-financial, just have patience with each other because in periods of stress, which young people are in all the time raising a family, there's always stress. And keep your eyes focused on your, on your soulmate and your, and your kids and uh, just keep plowing on one step at a, at a time. And then as every older person always says, and it gets really good in the future. So don't give up hope. You know, I know my, the time of raising my children, uh, it lasts such a short time. I, I was married, I think, by 23, I had my first child. And uh, by 45 or 50, I'd, they were, I'd raised them all. You know, I, they, 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 that's a very short time when your children are there. It seems like it's a long time. And it seems like you have this family and that's always going to be there. But it, it goes by so quickly. Uh, and then it, and then that opportunity is done. So for two things is don't think that the financial uh, jam you're in is always going to be that way. A fortitude, fortitude accumulates a, s- a series of s- small decisions uh, to, be, to continue in fortitude accumulates. But also along the way, don't neglect your family. I know one of the things I did is whenever I was running an errand, I'd always try to grab one of my kids to go with me. Even on a business trip, I would take a... Uh, one of my kids with me from time to time if I thought I could get away with it. You know, I'd, we'd, I'd, fly him to, I'd fly to another city or maybe over to Europe. I'd bring, a, I'd bring one of my kids with me to, uh, you know, as they got older. Uh, so always finding some room to put, fit them into my schedule and me into theirs. 
You know, the other thing to always remember, and, and this is something a lot of young people forget, is that there's a saying that goes, what's most personal is most universal. Meaning that terrible thing that you fear the most, that you that you keep hanging on your soul here, that keeps you up at three in the morning, is not unique to you. It's it's something that probably every other human on the planet goes through. And by recognizing that and that you're not the only person with the challenge that's facing you right now, again, it's liberating. It allows you to say, hey, I can get through it because everybody else does and early on it's often financial it really is and we make a lot of silly decisions sure like if i don't buy that really cool car now i probably never get to have it you know you you start out you're like okay i'm never going to own a a van of course now i guess it's the family suv but you know so you sneak out you buy that 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 one car at the wrong time and it can set you back forever one of the things i i've told young people uh, my clients as a cpa is you um make make a car payment to yourself mm-hmm. uh try to make a if you if you're you're used to making a 300 dollars a month car payment maybe make an extra 150 dollars a month car payment put it in a special savings account so the next time you go buy a car uh your trade-in plus what you have there will pay cash for the car you know to be to have a car that's paid for um is is a huge thing you know just think about how your life would be different if you never had a car payment and they did what you just described, Bear, get at getting in front of it. You know, I think about how much in the course of my life I paid on car payments and I could have put it on into so many other more worthwhile things. But those are the mistakes you make. And that's why you hope I hope that by talking to folks, they don't make the same mistakes I did. And then once you make that mistake, it just takes fortitude to uh, power to through work it. you out. But you can but you can uh, power power through that and you need mm-hmm. and you need to have hope why is there so much stress in the world why why is our world like that tom i think it's noise um with the technology that's out there we get bombarded we get stimulated by so many things um how many television stations are there on cable we have a phone attached to our hip when every moment we're looking at our texts and facebook and all that um at work you can't get away. You know, you're at, you go home on the weekend and you got your emails coming in. So I think it's overstimulated. It's almost, it's overstimulation and, um, it doesn't allow us to relax and to breathe. And because of that, our brains never get to, to focus and calm. I think it's very true. They say to talk to Jesus, you have to be quiet and it's hard to be quiet with all the noise coming in and you get disconnected from the way. And I think that all plays into that, that issue. Yeah. It's in the world. Jesus said, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, but we, we, it's kind of like we have to, I mean, if you're not spending a daily time of prayer with the Lord, you're going to get knocked off course. You're going to make bad decisions and you're not going to have the, you're not going to have the grace to continue. I, I think of how many times when I've, Start out the morning in prayer. I'll read through the catech- read the catechism, which I teach every every morning at seven a.m. wherever I happen to be on Facebook Live. But uh, the morning catechism. But then I'm reading the day's readings from the Mass and my Liturgy of the Hours, and how it just sets me up for the day. It seems like always there's something in there that speaks to me, either at that moment or at some time during the day that comes back to me. I recollect it. Well, it and centers. It, to it absolutely centers you to what's important, and it gives you that direction and that comp- compass heading for the rest of the day. If more people did that, I think there'd be a lot more happy people out there. We're talking with Tom Gripe. He's the president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, a friend of mine, a friend to our ministry. The credit union has been great for for us personally too. So we're big fans of the credit union. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, invite you to uh, to sign up for our uh, new email, our weekly newsletter. You can get uh, the radio shows sent to you even before they're aired. If you go on the new, if you sign up for the newsletter, you get them a day early. If you become a Patreon donor, you can receive those those recorded uh, audio, the video version of our show uh, sometimes weeks and even months before it airs. So go to our website deepadventure.com. It's a great, it's a really cool site, and go to Facebook. Go to Deep Adventure 
uh, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You'll see Deep Adventure with Bear Wozniak and follow us there. So many people come and want to friend me on Facebook and maybe 20 a week, but they can't friend me because I have the limit on friends. But look for us, look, look for us under Deep Adventure on Facebook, and then you can follow us and get all the things that we're posting. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back uh, with more with Tom Gripe, uh, president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak uh, Adventure. I'm, I want to talk to you about the man cave. The man cave is a unique experience. We have uh, men that uh, go to our Facebook page, uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and they sign up for Bear's Man Cave. It's the only place you can do that. You can't do it on Facebook. But once you do, you become a, a member of a, of a brotherhood of men uh, that challenge each other, equip each other, inspire each other on a secret Facebook page. So don't go to Facebook and try to sign up. You've got to go to deepadventure.com to sign up. And uh, I will post things. Other men will post things uh, that inspire each other. Often people will post challenges in their life where they need prayer or need, need counsel or need encouragement. And then about every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat where all the men get together on a Zoom video. Uh, usually, honestly, we have a shot of whiskey and a cigar. And, uh, and we're reading right now through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. But it's just a way for brothers to, uh, to, to be together. And then what's happened is a lot of those men uh, in, the, bear, in the, the Bears Man Cave are now creating their own man caves, their own uh, outreach to men. Maybe they meet with them in the deck of their deck of their yard and read through my book or read through something else. Some of the men are doing Jeff Caven's Great Adventure Bible series. Some, of, some men have been catapulted into uh, teaching catechism or confirmation or becoming deacons. But that's kind of our little incubator uh, to help encourage and challenge each other to, uh, to move on in, in the calling that God has for you. So go to deepadventure.com and become a member of the Man Cave. And women, if you're listening to this, uh, give your men a nudge and say, let's go check this out. Maybe you should become a member. Uh, uh, it's, it's, just a, it's just really, uh, to me, it's, it's my main source of being in touch with our viewers and our listeners, too. I get a lot of feedback from them, too. We're talking with Tom Gripe. He's the president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, uh, who's, who, is our, who is our only corporate sponsor. And, uh, and we have our personal sponsors, our listeners, uh, but we really value what Notre Dame Federal Credit Union is, means to us as far as being able to bring this show to you. But also, at a personal level, when, I was, when we were filming Long Ride Home in Hawaii and I, we, were, we were in the middle of uh, actually needing to finance the car that we had bought so we could help finance the, the shoot, <laughs> um, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union came through. Uh, Bettina there just did jump through so many hoops to help me do that while I was uh, texting her when I'd get off my motorcycle and things like that. And then also... Uh, you helped us, uh, you know, refinance a house. So, Tom Gripe, thank you for you and your leadership and, and for Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Well, again, it's a labor of love, and we'd, we'd love to help as many people as we possibly can. I'll ask you a question, because, you know, our ministry is primarily to men, although more women listen than men. Uh, what is your definition of what, uh, what are the two or three attributes of what a real man is? I think a real man is is a person who's willing to love unconditionally, a man who recognizes that uh, his he he needs to be um, a mentor to people. Um, it, it's somebody who's strong but humble at the same time, and not be afraid to to show that he's human, right? Because oftentimes men think they have to be superhero heroes, and it's not true. You just have to. You just have to engage. You have to love the best you can. You have to lead the best you can. You have to fail. And then you have to get up. And um, it's, it's, you know, the, the best, the, the strongest man I ever met was my dad. And he was probably the most humble and meek person you ever wanted to, to meet. But what he taught me is that a man can be 
a, a real man is as much quiet as he is loud. And it's the, the quiet steadiness. It's the it's the it's letting people rely on them, knowing they're always going to be there, being that steady source of unconditional love, be it to your spouse or to your children or professional love to the people you work with. Yeah. What do you mean by that professional love to the people you work with? Never well, again, it's, one of, it's one of the words. It's kind of like failure when you have to engage with it. But. We work with people that we're thrust to work with, right? We don't always pick who we work with, but they are children of God, just like we are. So you you love them and love them in in respect, and you respect them. and And um, it doesn't mean you don't hold people accountable. There's tough love, but caring for them like they're family because they are family. We're in the family of man, and. Looking at that in that sense, that people are not units of labor. They are people trying to make a living so that they can raise their families and accomplish their goals. And we're all pulling on the same oar together. So we have to be sensitive to that. We have to be willing to accommodate, you know, things that the bumps in the road that I have, that you have, that in our place a teller could have, a branch manager could have. And it's not all about production. It's not all about the numbers. That plays a role. But at the core, they're human beings. So you love them as such. Yeah. Um, Reverend Navarum, uh, one of the encyclicals, spoke a lot about that. Uh, people are not cogs in a wheel, and they're not, the, they're not the, uh, the means to an end. They are the end. People yeah. are the end. Okay. Right. And so to provide that sort of environment. What are, right. the, what are the two or three things that you would say to a young man uh, leading his family, what can he directly do? What what would be certain disciplines, weekly or monthly, whatever that he can do, in leading his family? Well, a lot of it is uh, being being stable, being predictable. Um, be home when you're supposed to be home. Be on the baseball field with your kid when you're supposed to be on the baseball field. Um, be that steady voice of of um, sanity, reliability. Let people know that they can count on you. And that doesn't, I keep saying this, it does not mean that you're perfect. It does not mean you're going to fail. It does not mean you're going to say bad things and do bad things. But, you, you know, the old Chinese proverb, right? Get knocked down six times, get up seven. That's what I would tell you. Don't be afraid to be human, but be strong, be persevere, have fortitude, as you say, and um, you can you can affect more lives than you think. One of the things I found as a father, too, is my job is to stand still um, mm -hmm. and not to let my values move mm -hmm. and be true to the core truths that I that I believe uh, and not to move. Because as as my four children went through life, uh, some of them would stretch out a long ways away from the standards that I hold, whether it's moral or or uh, the life of, of um, you know, my life of living life uh, to the fullest, living life adventurously. But they, when I stand there and they wander off, they know how far they've wandered off because I'm their waypoint. If I follow along with them, if I try to be their best friend, if I let my values and my truths change, then they lose their compass. The father, in a sense, is really kind of like the, the due north. You know, right? Absolutely. They're they're the uh, watchtower. They're the they're the guideposts that people look at. And you're right. I think a lot of us as Catholic uh, men and women, we struggle because we see our kids maybe not going to church like we want them to. We don't see them raising their kids the way we want them to. Um, at a certain point, you have to stop talking about it and you just stay true to your course and your faith recognizing eventually they will come home and you just have to have patience to let that happen. Yeah. You know, I was telling Cindy, it's so easy in Hawaii to know where you are because you see the mountains here, you see the ocean there, but when it come to Florida, you know, you're, you're driving through, you don't know what, especially if it's a cloudy day, you don't know which way is east, west, north or south. You have no, because it's flat and there's trees. And if it's a cloudy day, you just have no idea. Uh, but we should be like that mountain. Uh, mm -hmm. that, 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 that stands. In fact, in the Hawaiian tradition, 
uh, the man is considered like a palm tree. You know, it's like you can see that tree where the woman is considered a harbor. She's that, that all-embracing safety, say, place of safety. But the man is kind of that point where you see, uh, you see, you know, that my, that my father hasn't changed. I mean, we can change if we're wrong, but we need to stay true to what we've learned, uh, uh, what we've learned, but always keeping the arms open for the child to come home. But in my life, I've seen each of my children at some point or another stretch, stretch beyond uh, stretch. But it's kind of like a rubber band. The further they pull away, the more they realize, well, dad hasn't moved and I'm way out here now. And sometimes it snaps and they kind of feel like, like they're lost, but at least they know how to return. And to me, that's what, the, that's what the Catholic Church is. Oh, absolutely. I was going to say, one of the things that, that come with time and age, uh, at least for me, as I get older, I find myself going to more and more funerals of, of people who pass away and, you know, people's fathers and mothers and all. The common theme that people say about those men and women that are truly unique and special, you know, everybody speaks nice about folks when they pass, but the ones that are really special they say almost uniformly that that man or woman was the epitome of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. They were that guidepost. They were that um, the beacon where people knew they may not, you know, mom and dad or grandma and grandpa may not agree with me with everything and may, I may not agree with them, but they were a beacon of unconditional love. And that was the mountain, as you said, or the harbor. And I try to take that to heart because there's a lot we can learn as human beings by just keeping our eyes open and our ears open and our mouths shut. So going through the journey is what we're talking about today, loving unconditionally in spite of our own faux pas, I think gets us a long way to being what Christ wants us to be. Amen. We, we, we hold tr uh, true to that which we believe, but, but to love uh, knowing that God God, uh, as God loves. We've been talking with Tom Gripe. He's the president of Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, our main uh, corporate sponsor. By the way, if you're a corporate sponsor, you'd like to help us out, go to deepadventure.com. You can contact us there. We sure appreciate uh, your sharing, Tom. Uh, you're talking about Steadfast. You guys have been there for us, and we really appreciate you helping us keep this Thank ministry you. going. Uh, go to uh, Notre, Dame, uh, Notre Dame FCU.com. And you'll be amazed at the personal service that you get there. They can serve you anywhere in the, anywhere in the country, any, any place you are, because I'm in Hawaii, and they help us there. Well, just keep praying for us like we pray for you, and, and we'll lift each other up. It sounds good. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can go to deepadventure.com, and you can uh, go to the YouTube, Bear Wozniak YouTube, and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we post our, our uh, radio shows up there in the video format. Love you guys. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.